So uh, I'm, I have the pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. Isabelle Oswald. She is uh, qualified as an engineer in agricultural sciences in France and uh, did her PhD in uh, immunology at uh, INRI, the French National Institute of Agricultural Research. Also completed postdoctoral studies in Bethesda, Maryland, United States. She developed many tools to investigate the peak immune response. She analyzed the mechanism, for instance, involved in the immune suppression caused by ingestion of mycotoxins. She is author of more than 100 peer-reviewed international publications. She's also an expert of the European Food Safety Authority. I have the pleasure to meet with you as, as several times a year in EFSA uh, meetings. And uh, she's got a very uh, active research team uh, for instance, being uh, active in the area of uh, de de determination of the toxic effects of mycotoxins in pigs using both in vitro and ex vivo and in vivo models. So uh, we are very much looking forward to your talk. The floor is yours. Thanks for coming. Thank you, Rudy. So um, the last presentation uh, for this morning I'm going to talk about the enzymatic detoxification of fumonizine. So, the, what is the rationale for this uh, research? In fact, an enzymatic approach based on the hydrolysis of fumonizine by a carboxylesterase has been uh, developed by Biomin to target uh, fumonizine. And in fact, so, the problem was to know what is the toxicity of this hydrolyzed fumonizine, especially when compared to the parental compound fumonizine. So to do that, we did a comparative studies of the toxicity of fumonizine and hydrolyzed fumonizine. So as I told you, the objective was to compare the toxicity of the parent compound and the hydrolyzed form and so we use the pig as a model and we perform three different treatments. The animal receives either a control solution or a fumonizine B1 solution or an hydrolyzed fumonizine B1 solution. And the animal were treated for 14 days and they received the same dose of toxin, 2.8 micromolar per kilogram of body weight and per day. And considering the biological investigation, we look at what happened in the liver, in the intestine, and in the sphingolipid. So, what happened in the liver? Fumonizine is known, and it has been described by uh, Gelderblum and by Ron Ryla also, that uh, fumonizine is known to induce hepatotoxicity in many species. So, what about hydrolyzed fumonizine. In terms of liver damage, what we look, we look at the liver of the animal and we try to measure the liver damage by just measuring the score, doing histopathology and look at the lesion. And in fact, sorry, what you see is the lesion score were much higher in, uh, in fumonizine B1 treated animal than in control animal, indicating that fumonizine is hepatotoxic. But by contrast, hydrolyzed fumonizine doesn't display any uh, toxic effect as measured by lesion score. We have exactly similar results in terms of liver function. When looking at albumin, total protein, cholesterol, or triglyceride, we have an increase of this uh, protein in the serum of uh, animal receiving fumonizine, but they were stable in the animal receiving hydrolyzed fumonizine. We look also at the inflammatory response, and we look at plasma marker of this inflammatory response, such as fibrinogen and gamma glutamyl transferase, and there were increase in the fumonizine treated group, but there were not increase in the hydrolyzed fumonizine treated group. The inflammation was also looked by looking at some uh, in pro-inflammatory cytokines such as IL-1 and IL-8, and there was an increase with fumonizine and no increase with hydrolyzed fumonizine. 
As far as anti-inflammatory cytokine were concerned, such as IL-6 and IL-10, there was a decrease with hydrolyzed fumonisine that was not that high with hydrolyzed fumonisine. So, in conclusion, we can say that in this model, at least, uh, hydrolyzed fumonisine does not demonstrate any uh, toxic capacity. So, the next organ we look at was the liver. And in fact, in the liver, there is very few data, both on fumonisine and hydrolyzed fumonisine. So the first thing we look was to look at the intestinal damage by um, measuring lesion score, as we did with the liver. And you clearly see that fumonisine induces damages in the three different parts of the liver, the um, distal and ileal um, jejunum, as well as the, in the ileum. And there was no such um, lesion when animals receive uh, hydrolyzed fumonisine. In terms of morphometry, we measure villus heights and creep deaths, and there was an increase, uh, there was a decrease villus high in animal um, receiving fumonisine B1, and there was almost nothing in the animal receiving the hydrolyzed form. We also look at the, uh, the immune response in the intestine by measuring several cytokines in the four different uh, segments, the proximal and distal jejunum, the ileum, but also the, the lymph node of the intestine. Here is just the example of one mycotoxin IL-1 beta. And in the different part of the intestine, as well as in the lymph node, we find a decrease of expression of this cytokine in fumonisine B1-treated animal. And we didn't, the decrease was much lower or absent when the animal received the hydrolyzed form. So, if we want to summarize all the data that we get considering the cytokine expression, the data are summarized here, and you see that there was a lot of effect um, with um, uh, fumonisine B1. So fumonisine B1 act on cytokine in the intestinal tract. Basically, it decreased most of the cytokine we look at. By contrast, this is what we observe with hydrolyzed fumonisine, and there was only a very slight modulation of cytokine in this, uh, in this animal. Oops, sorry. The next uh, thing we wanted to investigate, and as it has been explained by a previous speaker, that uh, fumonisine is known to alter the um, sphingolipid metabolism, and especially it acts to um, on ceramide synthase. So this is fumonisine and this is a ceramide synthase pathway. And basically, because of its uh, homology of structure, it did a competitive inhibition on the active site of ceramide synthase. And basically, fumonisine B1 blocks the two enzymes, leading to an um, increased sphingosine, but a much more increase of sphingenin. So the sphingenin sphingosine ratio can be used as a marker. And indeed, we measure this sphingosine sphingosine ratio on the animal. And as expected, this sphingenin sphingosine ratio increase in animal receiving fumonisine B1 on the plasma. But this increase was not seen either in control animal or in animal receiving the hydrolyzed form of the toxin. And we saw that not only in the plasma, but also in the organ where there was an increase of fumonisine, of sphingenin sphingosine ratio in animal receiving fumonisine, both in the liver, in the lung, and in the kidney. But this increase was not seen in control animal or in animal receiving the hydrolyzed form of the toxin. So, from this uh, experiment, we can conclude that. Uh, Hydrolyzed fumonisine is not toxic because it does not alter the ceramide synthesis. So, in conclusion, we 
show that fumondizine demonstrates liver and intestinal toxicity as indicated by both histological lesion and impairment of the immune response. And this can have implication in terms of animal health, but also in terms of resistance to infectious disease, especially when you are targeting the immune system. By contrast, hydrolysis of fumonizine greatly reduces the toxicity of the toxin, both in the liver and in the intestine. And this decrease in the toxicity of hydrolyzed fumonizine is due to its inability to alter sphingolipid lipid metabolism. So this uh, can be considered as a new approach to detoxify mycotoxin contaminated feed. And I just want to highlight that even if I present uh, this um, uh, presentation, it was Bertrand who is in the audience that uh, was doing a PhD in my lab who did most of the work that I presented. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.